This is Ling270, Language, Technology, and Society. Today, we are going to examine the writing systems of the world in the context of Chapter 3 of our textbook, Language, Technology, and Society. Chapter 3 examines the question, how does writing represent language? We've established that writing is a technology. So what are the means that that technology uses in the languages of the world to represent language? Well, there are three important principles that we're going to examine that writing systems could potentially use. One is phonographic. So, a phonographic writing system is one in which the symbols represent sound. So a phonographic writing system has symbols, and in that writing system, the symbols represent sounds. The way that this happens can vary from system to system. In some phonographic systems, only consonants might be encoded. In others, consonants and vowels. In others, syllables. All writing systems are at least partially phonographic in nature. That is, every single writing system in the world that is used to write human language encodes sound. Most writing systems are only phonographic in nature. That is, for most of the writing systems in the world, only sound information is encoded in the symbols. An alternative principle is the logographic principle. In a writing system that is logographic in nature, the symbols in the writing system represent morphemes. So a purely logographic system would be one where the symbols represent morphemes and sound information is not directly encoded. A few writing systems are partially logographic in nature. This means that there are a few writing systems that encode information about morphemes. Chinese is an example of a partially logographic system. However, no writing system is purely logographic. That is, there is no writing system that encodes only the morphemes without reference to the sounds. The third possible principle is ideographic. So, in an ideographic writing system, the symbols in that writing system represent ideas. So, in the 17th century, when Leibniz and other scientists were trying to come up with an ideographic writing system, this is the goal that they were striving toward where each symbol represents a, an abstract idea. A few writing systems are partially ideographic in nature. So there is a small subset of Japanese symbols that are ideographic uh, specifically. However, no writing system is purely ideographic. There was a long held fallacy that the Chinese writing system is purely ideographic. However, that is a fallacy. The Chinese writing system includes lots of information about sounds. So, now that we've established three principles by which writing systems can encode information about language, let's look at the different types of writing systems. These writing systems are going to differ in exactly what information they encode. Let's look first at a system that is purely ideographic in nature. That would be a, semi, a semasiography. So 
a, semiz, a semasiography would be only using the ideographic principle. No pure semiz, semasiographies exist. Many have been attempted, but none actually succeeded. A logography would be a writing system that is purely logographic in nature. Again, no pure logographies exist. Chinese is an example of a writing system that is partially logographic, but it is not purely a logography, but rather a syllaba, a, a system that combines a logography with a syllabary. A syllabary is phonographic in nature. In a syllabary, the syllables are encoded. Japanese kana systems, Cherokee, and Yi are examples of writing systems that are syllabaries. An abjad is also phonographic in nature. In an abjad, symbols represent consonants only. Arabic and Hebrew are examples of phonographic writing systems that encode only consonants. They are examples of abjads. There are often variants of abjads that allow for optional diacritics representing vowels, but pure abjads represent consonants only. An Abu Gida is a phonographic writing system where symbols represent a combination of a consonant along with a vowel. So they're encoding sound information. They're encoding sound information about consonants, but each symbol also contains some information about the vowel that might accompany that consonant. Ethiopic is an example of an Abu Gida that is a phonographic writing system that encodes this combination of consonant with vowel. Probably the most widespread Abu Gidas are those used in India that are from the Brahmic systems. A descendant indirectly of the Brahmic systems are the Canadian Aboriginal syllabics. While called syllabics, they are in fact Abu Gidas. The type of system that most of you are probably most familiar with is alphabet. So alphabetic systems are phonographic systems where the symbols can represent either a consonant or a vowel. So consonants have specific symbols in an alphabet and vowels also have their own independent symbols in an alphabet. The Greek alphabet is one good example of an alphabet. Another very widespread alphabet is the Latin alphabet and its many variants. The Cyrillic writing system is also an alphabet. Here is a map showing various writing systems around the world and how widespread they are geographically. So you can see here that the light blue color represents countries where the Latin alphabet is predominantly used. This is used in most of the countries in Europe and in many places around the world. The Cyrillic writing system is used primarily in Northern Asia, central to Russia and countries near Russia. Another alphabet that I didn't mention before is the Georgian system. This is also an Asian writing system. Arabic and Hebrew are the primary abjads that we're familiar with. Excuse me. Uh, yes, abjads. In India, we have a number of abugidas. In China, we have a system that is partially logographic 
and partially syllabic. In Korea, we have an alphabet that is featural in nature, but is still an alphabet. Let's review how these various writing systems came to be in relation to one another. We have previously examined some of the earliest proto-writing systems. The book talks about this in terms of proto-cuneiform, which turned into cuneiform, and the oracle bone script, which turned into modern Chinese. From the oracle bone script, one of these early proto-writing systems was developed modern Chinese. Modern Chinese can be called a logosyllabary. That is, it has aspects of both a logography and a syllabary. One descendant is of this are the syllabaries found in the Japanese kana systems. The Japanese kana systems are syllabaries. They directly represent syllables. So they're phonographic in nature, where each symbol represents a syllable. Another syllabary is linear B. Linear B directly came from these early proto-writing systems. From these early proto-writing systems, we had the first objads. So the first objads came to be in Proto-Sinaitic, Proto from the Sinai area near Egypt. This developed into Phoenician, and from Phoenician, Aramaic later developed. From the Phoenician and Aramaic objads developed alphabets and abugidas. Aramaic developed into various Brahmi abugidas that became prevalent throughout the Indian subcontinent. proto sinaitic also developed into Ethiopic, which is another abugida used in Africa. From Phoenician developed the Greek alphabet, where the Greeks took the Phoenician abjad and added symbols for vowels. From Greek developed the Latin alphabet, from which many current alphabets are used and are developed. Let's now review from these five types of systems those currently prevalent around the world. In Chinese, we have a good example of a logo syllabary, where morpheme information and sound information in terms of syllables is encoded in the symbols. In terms of syllabaries, the Japanese kana systems are good examples of syllabaries where each symbol encodes a syllable. Cherokee and Yi are other good examples of modern syllabaries. In terms of objads, we have Arabic and Hebrew, both examples of modern objads that are in wide use. In terms of abugidas, we have Ethiopic and the Brahmic scripts as classic examples of abugidas, along with Canadian Aboriginal symbols. And in terms of alphabet, we have Greek, Latin, and Cyrillic as three of the major alphabets currently in use in the world today. Let's summarize. The phonographic principle says that a writing system that is phonographic in nature has symbols that represent sound in some way. A logographic writing system has symbols that represent morphemes. An ideographic writing system has symbols that directly represent ideas. Let's review the types of writing system. 
An abjad is a phonographic system that represents consonants. Arabic and Hebrew are abjads. Arabic and Hebrew are phonographic writing systems that directly represent consonants but don't represent vowels, at least not in the most common variants. An alphabet is a phonographic writing system that represents both consonants and vowels. In an alphabet, some symbols represent consonants and other symbols represent independent vowels. Latin is an example of a widespread alphabet, along with Korean. Korean may not look like an alphabet. It is featural in nature, but it does independently represent consonants and vowels. An abugida is a phonographic system that couples consonants with vowels. So the various Brahmic scripts used in the Indian region are examples of abugidas, along with Ethiopic. A syllabary is a phonographic system that represents syllables directly. Cherokee is a good example of a syllabary, a writing system that is phonographic in nature and where the symbols represent syllables. A logography is a writing system that is logographic in nature. That is, in a logography, each symbol directly represents a morpheme. There are no writing systems in the world that are pure logographies. That is, no writing system represents only morphemes without also encompassing some sound information. A semasiography is an ideographic writing system where the symbols directly represent ideas. That is, in a semasiography, we have a writing system that is ideographic in nature, and each symbol directly represents an idea. There are no pure semasiographies. The bliss symbolic system that we discussed earlier this semester attempted to be a pure semasiography, but as we saw, some sound information necessarily was introduced. Chinese is a system that combines aspects of a syllabary and a logography. The symbols in Chinese represent morphemes, but also include syllabic information about sound. The Japanese writing system is a hybrid writing system that incorporates aspects of a logography in its Chinese symbols that it imports, along with syllabaries in its two different kana systems, and small aspects of semasiography in the Japanese kokuji system. So, how does writing represent language? Well, writing uses symbols and in the vast majority of cases, writing represents language primarily by representing sounds. So the symbols in a writing system mostly represent sounds, either by representing consonants, as in an abjad, or consonants and vowels, as in an alphabet, or some combination of consonants and vowels, as in an abugida or a syllabary,